change your mind, Mama, because Samuel needs to pour a horn of oil on a ruddy-faced shepherd boy by the name of David, and the power of God's going to come on him, and he's going to take down that mighty Goliath in the name of the Lord. Please, Mama, don't change your mind.
number one, verse number 11, in reference to the woman Hannah, the mother of the great prophet Samuel. The Bible said, so Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. She was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Pay very close attention to verse 11. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man-child. Then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. I will give him to the Lord. Look over to verse 24. God answered her prayer. God granted her a child. And now she is praying a prayer of thanksgiving. And when she had winged him, she took him up, she took him up with her with three bullocks, one ephod of flour, a bottle of wine, and brought him into the house of the Lord in Shiloh, and the child was young. And they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh, my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here praying unto the Lord. For this child I pray, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I ask him of. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord as long as he liveth, and he shall be lent to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. You may be seated in the audience today. My title, and it may take me a few moments to get to my title, but I want to go ahead and introduce my title to all of the mothers here in the house, all of the Mothers that are watching by the World Wide Web and television. I want to preach for just a few short moments. Mama, don't change your mind. Mama, don't change your mind. How important it is that godly mothers not change their mind. Hannah, she was barren and she faced a lot of reproach because of being barren. Going to the house of God when it should be a joyous time for Hannah became a time of great pain because she remained barren. But Hannah got desperate and she began to pray while she was there in the house of the Lord. She began to pray. And she said, Lord, if you would give me a child, if you would give me a child, God, I'll give him to you. I'll give him to you all the days of his life. No razor will come on his head. He'll be a Nazarite. I'll give him. I'll take him down and I'll give him. He'll be given. He's given away. I'll give him to you. Well, the Lord heard Hannah's prayer. And the Lord answered Hannah's prayer, and the Lord gave her Samuel. But I, I noticed something in the language when Hannah, it's time for Hannah. We don't really know how old Samuel was, but she brings Samuel to the house of the Lord to turn him over to Eli the priest. She, she brings him there to give him to the Lord, but her prayer... Her, her words here concern me as she stands before Eli. 
She says, do you remember who I am? I am the woman that you came by and noticed I was in prayer, so grievously in prayer. I'm the woman that you accused of being drunk. You thought I was drunk, and you as the priest rebuked me for being drunk. And I told you I'm not drunk, but a woman of a sorrowful spirit. And uh, I was praying for a child. And she says, I can see her kind of motion, uh, bring Samuel out. And, and she pushes Samuel toward Eli. And she said, this is the child that I prayed for. And this is the child that God gave us. And then she says these words in verse 28. She said, I have lent him to the Lord all the days of his life. Now, I, I, I want to bring a, a, a something to our attention today, and that's the difference between giving God something and lending God something. If I give you a gift, I'm not expecting it back. If I give you something and I say, here, this is a gift, it belongs solely, wholly, it belongs to you then I'm not expecting one day. I have no claims to that anymore. Although I gave it to you, I have absolutely no claims on this because I have given this to you. But if I change the wording and I bring you, I bring you that shirt for your birthday or I bring you that, that, that pot of flowers for your, for your birthday and I say, hey, I'm so glad it's your birthday, Brother Holland, and I bought you a shirt and I'm going to lend you this shirt. I want you to know I'm so happy to be able to lend you this sh sh shirt. You're going to look at that. You're not going to wear that shirt probably like you would. You're, you're, you're not going to feel possession of that because the pastor is just, he's just loaned me. He is lending me this shirt. Well, I really just want to take that phrase there and say to Hannah, Mama, don't change your mind. Please, Mama, don't ever go down to the temple and take that child out of the temple because, Hannah, you don't know it, but Israel's going to get in a horrible, sinful condition. Hannah, you don't know it, but Eli's sons are very sinful and God is going to strike them dead. God is going to take them and the temple is going to be in a, in, in a wreck. Hannah, please don't come and get don't come and get Samuel. Please don't come down to the temple and take him out because Samuel is going to be needed. He's going to anoint Israel's first king. Israel's going to need a king and are going to want a king. And it's going to be Samuel that's going to pray the prayer over the first king. So please, mama, don't change your mind. There's a man called Goliath. He's a Philistine. He's a Jehovah hater. He hates the people of God. And he's growing inch by inch and pound by pound every day. Please, Hannah, don't change your mind, Mama, because Samuel needs to pour a horn of oil on a ruddy-faced shepherd boy by the name of David. And the power of God's going to come on him. And he's going to take down that mighty Goliath in the name of the Lord. Please, Mama, don't change your mind. Please, Mama, please, Mama, Israel's going to go astray. Israel's going to forget the Ten Commandments. And the only thing that's going to keep them reminded is going to be an old prophet that will die making a circuit from city to city. Old Samuel, though he was gray-headed, though he was old, though he was hurting in his body, he made a circuit from Bethel to Gilgal. He made a circuit throughout Israel saying there's one God and let's worship this one God only. In his young days, his voice was sprite, his voice was peppy, but as age caught a hold of him, his voice began to tremble. But he was still the voice of Samuel saying there's only one God. There's only one Jehovah. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not have any other God. Please, Mama, don't change your mind. You see, Mama, the changing of your mind can put a nation at risk of losing their walk with God. And Mama's here today and those watching by the web and by television 
Please don't change your mind spiritually. You brought these children into this world. God has connected you to these children like none other. There's nobody on this planet that has a connection with your children, Mama, like you do. Mama, there's nobody that can pray for that son like you can, Mama. Mama, there's nobody that can pray for that daughter like you can, Mama. There's nobody that can carry the burden like you carry it, Mama. Mama, we're living in a culture that wants to take you out of your high and lofty position as a mother. Mama, there's a godless culture that's trying to tell you that it's degrading and demeaning for you to call yourself a mother, for you to call yourself one that tends to the house and sets the atmosphere in the house. But I'll tell you there's a reason for all of these school shootings and there's a reason for all the crime that is in the United States of America at this time. You can blame it on guns all you want to. You can blame it on drugs all you want to. But I think if we would take the thread, we would find it all the way back to a mama who changed her mind. Her fashion was more important than the children's upbringing. How she felt about herself down at the spa was more important did Johnny pray this morning does Susie have a Bible now do they who are their friends mama nobody's going to keep up with their friends like you are so I plead with the mothers of first apostolic church mama don't change your mind you said you would give him to God and you need to give him to God don't loan him to God It has been said, I am not the originator of this by no means, but it has been said the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. And how true that that is. We would have never had a Moses to deliver us had we not had a mama, had we not had a mama that was willing to conceal him. We would have not had a lot of things in Scripture had we not had a mama and thank God today, I stand. We do not deify Mary. Mary was a woman like any woman in this room. Mary was a young virgin girl. But you know, Mama, I'm so thankful that Mary yielded her body to the Holy Ghost. I'm so thankful when the angel come down and the angel said, the Holy Ghost will overshadow you and that thing that is born of you is the Son of God. That that mother, that young girl said these simple words, be it unto me as you have said. She said, if I'm supposed to be pregnant without a man and carry the Savior into the world, I'll make up my mind. I'll make up my mind. I'll, I'll be the vessel that brings God, Jehovah, robed in flesh. I'll be the vessel that brings him. Come on, Mama. She didn't change her mind when everybody would whisper about her and the other women would whisper as she went by and they would whisper accusations that uh, she had stepped out on her husband, her engaged husband, Joseph, uh, and she really had that child, Jesus, uh, by fornication uh, she was willing to hold her head high because 30 years 30 years of holding her head high she never in that 30 year period she never doubted him in that 30 year period there's no record that she ever doubted him there's no record that she ever got tired of him because when he's 30 years old they're going to attend a wedding in Cana of Galilee and the Bible said Jesus was there and his mother and they said we don't have any wine this is so embarrassing there's more guests here today than guest cake there's more guests here today than punch there's more guests here today oh no it we're running out of cake we're running out of punch and what they were running out of was wine and the Bible said they came they came to Mary that's odd right there that, that, that's, that needs to be looked into they came to Mary sometimes when embarrassing situations are about to happen it's mama that can step in and cause that embarrassing situation to turn around it's mama that can step in and say just wait just a minute uh, they don't have any wine this is very embarrassing and she went to Jesus and she said they have no wine and he said something about woman my hour is not yet come and something that Bible theologians have been trying to figure out but Mary just takes a few steps back she says something I can figure out 
She said, whatever he says to do, you just do it. Seems like to me, if we can get some godly mamas in the house, they always know what to say. And that's the truth. You can get out of your drug problem by whatever Jesus says. Just do it. You can get out of all of your issues in life if we just had some mamas that would say whatever he says. I submit to you today that if mama, if you change your mind, there's no one going to care about that boy or that girl like you can. Well, sin had so come to Israel. And in first, or excuse me, Second Samuel 21 and 9, I'm talking about the love of God this morning. In 2 Samuel 21 and verse number 9, Saul had not done right, the first king. And David had to make it right with a group of people. And so he asked this group of people, what would it take to have peace with you all? And those people said, we want to hang seven sons of Saul we want to hang them by the neck. We want to nail them to trees. And we want to hang them. And the Bible said David consented, consented to that. In verse 9, 2 Samuel 12, 21, 9, And he delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them in the hill before the Lord, and they fell all seven together, and were put to death in the days of harvest. In the first days, in the beginning of barley harvest, and Rizba, the daughter of Ahia, took sackcloth, spread it for her up on the rock. From the beginning of harvest until the water dropped upon them out of heaven several months, suffering neither the birds of the air to rest on them by day, nor the beasts of the field by night. Now you look at that for a moment with me. You know why that woman can stay out there several months, spread an old hairy garment, sackcloth, on a rock to have as her bed and a rock to have as her pillar to drive off beasts, to drive off beasts, vultures, wild animals that, wanted, that were smelling, that were smelling the rock and the decay of seven sons, you know? You know what can cause her to stay up at night, not get very much sleep? I imagine after a few months of that lifestyle, she didn't look like somebody on the cover of Vogue magazine. But I'm going to tell you why she's there. Them's my boys up there. Them's my boys up there. On, shoo, get out of here. Get away from here. Get out of here. You're not going to eat on the, my, my, my son's body. Get out of here. Get out of here. Go away. Not even the hope of a decent burial. But because a mother would not change her mind, it flooded her. I remember the day he was born. I remember when he cut his first tooth. I remember when he took his first step. Memories flooded her mind. She drove off the wild beast. But mama, you've never made a stand for God what the king hasn't taken notice of. For the Bible says in verse 11, and it was told David what Rizba, the daughter of Ahiah, the concubine of Saul had done. And David sent and took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan from the men of, of Jabesh Gilead and had stolen them from the street of Bethshon where the Philistines had hanged them. In other words, here's what, he, here's what happened. I can read through the verses. She, somebody come to David and somebody said, David, you know about four months ago you gave a decree for seven to the sons to be hung. And he said, yes. And he said, well, one of their mothers, a mother, 
is down there and said she's not went home. She slept on sackcloth. She's had a rock for a pillar. She's down there beating the vultures off by day. I don't know what I don't know what bodies would look like after four months of hanging on a tree. I don't know what she was looking. I don't even know, honey, Sister Carp, I don't even know if them boys was recognizable anymore. I don't know what they what they looked like, but I know there was a mother there that said, "I won't let any of them. I won't let the beast get them." And finally, somebody told King David, and King David said, "You know what? In light of what's happening, I'm giving the." Those sons a royal burial they're going to be taken down and put in a royal burying place can I tell you today that we've got sons and daughters that if we'll keep on praying for them there's a place called water baptism in Jesus name that they can be buried for the remission of their sins when sin is eating away their body when sin is eating them away that you don't even recognize your son or daughter anymore mama keep on your prayer their knees. Mama, keep on pleading the blood of Jesus. Mama, keep on ringing the prayer bells of heaven because God's going to hear you. For more information about the Apostolic Connection or First Apostolic Church of Maryville, Tennessee, visit our website at factv.org.